Today we would normally be gathering together for our annual Marian pilgrimage here at Mount Schoenstatt. Since this is not possible because of the coronavirus, I, with you, spiritually greet the Blessed Mother here in the shrine and would just let you know that we have decided to share with you uh, a shortened version of the a video from the pilgrimage in 2018 when we celebrated the Golden Jubilee of the Shrine. We will listen to uh, Archbishop Fisher's homily and also be able to participate in the renewal of our commitment as coordinators. So in this way we hope to bring you something from the spirit of our pilgrimage day and sisters here will be praying for all of you and hope that you also pray for us. Let us be united with the Blessed Mother spiritually here in the shrine at Mount Schoenstatt. I wish you a blessed day. God bless. Today we're going to celebrate 50 years celebration of the shrine. How exciting! Yes. A lot. This is this is well. To be honest, it's wonderful to be part of this. It's very special to be ever once be present on a blessing of a new shrine. Welcome to the clergy, to our musicians, and to all who have come here from all parts of our state, from Canberra, Victoria, West Australia, and Queensland, and even from Spain and Chile. May the celebration today make a difference in our lives, open new horizons for us, that we not only delight in having found a shrine, a home in the shrine of our mother, but that we also give a home to one another in our hearts. For there is no place like home. A warm welcome to all of you.
and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. Dear sisters, fathers, and friends all, it's a great joy to join you once again here at Schoenstatt, but especially this year for the Golden Jubilee of the Blessing of the Shrine of Mary, Mother Thrice Admirable, Queen and Victress of Schoenstatt. I acknowledge my brother bishops can celebrating with me today. His Excellency, the Maronite Eparch, the Most Reverend Antoine Charbel Carabay, and His Lordship, the Auxiliary Bishop of Sydney, the Most Reverend Anthony Randazzo. Three Bishops Anthony today. I acknowledge with gratitude the many priests can celebrating this Mass, hearing confessions, or otherwise assisting with our devotions. In his homily 50 years ago, when blessing this shrine, wearing that very mitre I'm wearing today, my predecessor, Cardinal Gilroy, praised this beautiful little gem of a chapel, which he described as the St. Mary's of the West. The beautiful municipality in which it stands, but above all, the beautiful Schoenstatt sisters, whose hard work he believed would have a profound influence. I think the last half century has borne out his words. So I thank Sister Mary Thomasine and all the sisters for sharing their 50th birthday celebrations with us and for their hospitality at this beautiful mountain shrine, not just today, but all year round, not just in this golden anniversary year, but for five decades now and very many more to come. I'm grateful for the impact that the sisters, fathers, families, friends and pilgrims who share in the life of Schoenstatt have had on the devotional life of the faithful in Sydney, on formation of the laity and through support of families, youth and adults. Thank you all for coming to join in these celebrations. What to give the woman who has everything? We can imagine Pope Francis kneeling at his pre thinking just this. What present can I give Mary on the 160th anniversary of the Lourdes apparitions and, more importantly, the 50th anniversary of her Schoenstatt Shrine in Australia? Pope Francis is not much of a shopper. So he hit upon a gift that the church has given Mary many times before, a new feast day. From this year onwards, Whit Monday, the day after Pentecost, will be set aside to celebrate the memorial of Mary, mother of the church. It's a rather lovely present. The Holy Father hoped this new memorial would remind us that growth in the Christian life must be anchored to the ablation of Christ in the Eucharist and on the cross and to the offering of the Virgin to God as mother of the Redeemer and of all the redeemed. But where did he get this title from and why connect it with today's feast of Pentecost. The title Mata Ecclesiae, Mother of the Church, goes back to the New Testament. As our Lord hung dying upon the cross, he said to his beloved Mother Mary, Woman, this is your son. And to his beloved disciple John, this is your mother. As Mary was a widow with no other children, Jesus was intent upon making provision for her care after he had gone. But he was equally intent on making provision for his church, and so he gave Mary a new mission. 
spiritual authors from St. Ambrose and St. Augustine in the 4th and 5th centuries, the Dominican Archbishop of Florence, St. Antoninus, in the 15th century, the Redemptorist founder, St. Alphonsus, in the 18th century, all referred to Our Lady as Mother of the Church. So did Pope St. Leo the Great, Leo the Thirteenth, John the Twenty Third, John Paul the Second, and Benedict the Sixteenth. The Byzantine liturgy also honours her in parallel ways. The Second Vatican Council chose, instead of issuing a distinct document on Mary, to present its teaching on the Blessed Virgin as the climax of the document on the church. The council called her the image and beginning of the church as perfected in heaven. The exemplar of the church as a loving mother for all and the model for every Christian of discipleship and virtue, contemplation and obedience. It was Paul VI at the conclusion of the third session of that great council who formally declared that the Mother of God should be further honoured and invoked by the entire Christian people by this tenderest of titles, Mother of the Church. In 1978, a votive mass in her honour was introduced in 1980, the title added to the Litany of Loreto. In 1993, it was included in the Catechism of the Catholic Church. So the title has a long pedigree, even if the feast is very recent. But what's it got to do with Pentecost? Well, after Jesus entrusted the church to his mother's maternal care as he was dying on the cross, Mary largely dropped out of the New Testament picture. There's no record, for instance, of the two meeting after the resurrection, though Jesus surely showed his risen self to her first of all. We're not told how she held together the church when the apostles were frightened and ashamed. Nor have we information on the long years between her son's ascension and her own assumption. But she does appear once more explicitly. And that is accompanying the apostles in prayer as they awaited the coming of the Holy Spirit at Pentecost. A second reason for associating the mother of the church with Pentecost is that today is traditionally the birthday of the church. As Mary conceived the Son of God by the power of the Holy Spirit at the Annunciation, so she and the apostles conceive his body, the church, by the power of that same spirit at Pentecost. So when the title Mother of the Church was included in the Catechism, it was in the section devoted to, I believe in the Holy Spirit and the Holy Catholic Church. Hearing the story of Pentecost each year, we can easily get caught up in the extraordinary goings-on. The violent wind, the tongues of flame, the apostles speaking tongues, Peter's address to the crowd, 3,000 baptisms on the church's very first day. Amidst so much noisy activity, we can fail to notice Mary, quietly present, 
deeply contemplating, powerfully interceding, perfectly modeling, gently mentoring the early church. The church as a whole and each of us members need that Marian dimension of quietly pondering all God has done and is doing in us. We must listen and think before we speak, before rushing out to evangelize or otherwise change the world. We must patiently await the Holy Spirit so that he is what inspires us in all our actions and not just our own vain imaginings. So the woman of Pentecost, the mother of the church, teaches the men like myself who like to talk, teaches us all to shut up sometimes and listen. She also teaches us that words are not enough, that people need the witness of holy lives from us. Though Mary could and sometimes did speak, we mostly see her quietly contemplating or else quietly acting. As when she went to her cousin Elizabeth's aid, took her son aside to intercede with him at Cana, followed him on his mission so she could cook and care for him, stood by him to the end at the cross. Mary, through her quiet presence, teaches us that before we talk faith and ethics, we should appropriate them deeply into our own mind and character. And after we talk faith and ethics, we must walk that talk, put them into action, especially in that life of raising up the lowly of which she sang in her Magnificat. Fifty years ago, we were given a space in which to do such quiet pondering and such planning for acting. Fifty years ago, this shrine was blessed. And the founder of the Schoenstatt movement, Father Joseph Kentenick, wrote to the community here to offer his congratulations, prayers and counsel. In that letter, he spoke of the dedication of the movement to Mary as mother thrice admirable and of her role as model for this community. The name thrice admirable is often taken to refer to her threefold motherhood as mother of God, mother of Jesus, mother of all the redeemed. Which is why Pope Francis could have had this birthday celebration in mind when he decided to link the two feasts of Pentecost and Mother of the Church. Ecce Mata Tua, behold your mother. At shrines and centres throughout the world, members of the Schoenstatt movement behold their mother in her thrice admirable image pledge a covenant of love to her and ask her to guide them in sharing her task in the church. They invite her image into their homes so their homes might become her home. Now the whole church joins you in honouring her as mother of all the redeemed, mother of the one holy Catholic and apostolic church. From now on, we're all Schoen starters, at least once a year, on the feast of the mother of the church. So today, as we celebrate the birth of the church, 
and the birth of this shrine, let us pay attention especially to Mary, our mother, and commit ourselves heart and soul to God as she did at the Annunciation, at the Crucifixion, and again at Pentecost. As our country faces big challenges, and our church too, in the shadow of the Royal Commission, in the face of the moves right now to advance the culture of death by banning any objection to abortions in public places, by the discussions of the future of religious liberty in this country and so much else going on right now around us. As the church looks forward to a celebrating a plenary council in 2020, more than ever today, we need the intercession and example and wisdom of that woman of Our Lady, Mother of the Church, of the Mother Thrice Admirable, Queen and Victress of Schoenstatt, interceding for us as she did at the first Pentecost, interceding that we might have a new Pentecost in this land, a new outpouring of the Holy Spirit upon our church and our country. Thanks be to God for all of you on this golden jubilee. A very happy birthday to the sisters, fathers, lay members and friends of Schoenstatt in Australia. Ad multos annos. The coordinators have come today with their pilgrim mother shrines to give thanks to our mother thrice admirable of Schoenstatt for the many blessings she has interceded for all those who have received the Pilgrim Mother Shrine in their homes. You wish to be coordinators who will carry these Pilgrim Mother Shrines with a picture of our Mother Thrice Admirable and her son to many families. In this way, you want to help to fulfill the great mission which God has entrusted to Mary for our time. You wish to renew your commitment as coordinators for another 12 months and to be sent out anew from the shrine. I invite you to pray your consecration prayer. Dear Mother Thrice Admirable, Queen and Victress of Schoenstatt, today you wish to continue your pilgrimage from this shrine to the homes of those longing for you and for your special gifts of grace. I thank you for having chosen me in a special way to help you in your great mission for our church and world. I wish to be an apostle and invite many to accept you into their homes. I want to inspire them to open their hearts to you, our mother and educator. I want to encourage them to trust in your powerful intercession. We pray the rosary. Let us join together in renewing the covenant of love with our mother thrice admirable Queen and Victress of Schoenstatt. My Queen, my mother, I give myself entirely to you, and to show my devotion to you, I consecrate to you this day my eyes, my ears, my mouth, my heart, myself without reserve. As I am your own, my good mother, guard and defend me as your property and your possession. Amen. Heavenly Father, bless these Pilgrim Mother Shrines in which Mary visits many people in their homes, schools, and at people's workplaces. May the encounter with her and her divine son open many a heart 
to the reality of the divine in their everyday life and bring about a change of heart and mind. Make them ready to serve Christ and give witness to him like Mary did. This we ask through Christ our Lord. Now, dear Mother, thrice admirable and Queen of Schoenstatt, we ask you, send the coordinators out again with renewed strength and fervor to carry your picture and that of your divine Son to many people so that they may experience countless blessings from the Schoenstatt Shrine. present in the monstrance we look at you we look in awe and wonder and we cannot grasp it Lord God your love for us is infinite we adore you father you have sent your son as the pledge of your love out of love he took on flesh and came to us into the world Out of love, he offers himself as the food of sacrifice on the altar. There he wants to reign among us always, dwelling entirely in our midst. Out of love, he continues to live and work among us through his word. As the wellspring of divine and eternal truth, full of burning love and radiant charity. Jesus. Glory and thanks and honour be yours. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit.
you have given them bread from heaven, alleluia. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, who gave us the Eucharist as the memorial of your suffering and death, may our worship of this sacrament of your body and blood help us to experience the salvation you won for us and the peace of the kingdom where you live with the Father and the Holy Spirit one God forever and ever. Blessed be God. Blessed be His holy name. Blessed be Jesus Christ, true God and true man. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Blessed be His most sacred heart. Blessed be His most precious blood. Blessed be Jesus in the most holy sacrament of the altar. Blessed be the Holy Spirit, the Paraclete. Blessed be the Great Mother of God, Mary Most Holy. Blessed be her holy and immaculate conception. Blessed be her glorious assumption. Blessed be the name of Mary, Virgin and Mother. Blessed be St. Joseph, her most chaste spouse. Blessed be God in his angels and in his saints. Oh, my God. 
we come towards the conclusion of our celebration today. On behalf of the Schoenstatt family in Australia, I'd like to say thank you, Your Grace, for your presence here with us, your inspiring words and your homilies. In your announcement about, uh, to us anyway, about the new feast of Our Lady Mother of the Church, and your linking of that to Pentecost, because she was in the Senegal with the apostles at the time, I must say that gives us a sense of great hope for the future of our movement here in Australia. And I thank you for that. I also thank you for the fact that whilst you were here in 2014 uh, for the pilgrimage that we always have in May, uh, that was during the year of our centenary, a centenary of our uh, covenant of love with our mother thrice admirable. Thank you for coming again. That gives us hope that you will come yet again in the future. So thank you for your presence today. We now have uh, some blessing of religious articles, which um, you can hold up. And I'll ask uh, Archbishop to stand and do that generally. Heavenly Father, we consecrate these items of devotion to you, to our Blessed Mother, and to all the saints, and ask that you keep safe and close to you always those who see them and pray with them, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. attention for a minute longer, please. I wish to thank the choir this afternoon, Rondalia and Blacktown Choir, directed by Gaston Al-Ari. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs>